When there's a linear relationship, the general form of any line is y equals m times x plus b. So if the original graph is linear, we get the slope, we get the y-intercept, and we can essentially write the equation for whatever specific linear graph that we have. But what if we have a top opening parabola, a side opening parabola, or a hyperbolic relationship? How do we write the equations for those types of nonlinear relationships? In this video, that's what I want to show you. So it turns out that there's a mathematical technique called linearizing a graph or re-expressing a graph to make a nonlinear relationship appear linear. And if you can do that, then you can very easily write the equation for how the two variables are related. So let me show you what that looks like. So on our Patterns in Nature poster in the classroom or the handout that I gave you, it shows you how to do those two things, to linearize or re-express a nonlinear graph. So what does that look like? Well, if we have a top opening parabola, if we were to graph whatever we have on the x-axis, the horizontal axis, and square those values, and then graph y versus x squared, if the original graph is top opening parabolic, we're gonna get something that looks linear. Or, if your original graph looks like a side opening parabola, instead of squaring what's in the x-axis, you'd square whatever values or measurements or calculated values are on your y-axis, and if you then graph the square of your y values versus x, you should get a linear relationship if indeed your original graph was truly a side opening parabola. And then for the hyperbolic relationship, whereas x increases, y decreases, uh, there's two different ways to re-express or linearize that kind of graph. And you kind of have to just try one, and that, if that doesn't work, try the other one. You either do that by taking whatever is graphed on your horizontal axis, and you have to take the inverse of those values, and then square sorry, then graph y versus 1 over x, or you graph y versus 1 over x squared. And doing that should give you a linear relationship um, showing you what type of hyperbolic relationship that was. Well, let's say we make these linearized or re-expressed graphs. How do we get the equation then which tells us how the original two variables are related? Well, if we have a linear relationship, uh, whether it's the original graph or a re-expressed graph, any linear relationship is still going to follow the general form of y equals m times x plus b, or uh, whatever is graphed on the y-axis is equal to the slope of your linear fit times whatever is graphed on your x-axis. And for a re-expressed graph for a top opening parabola, that would be x squared. So instead of x, in our equation, we're going to write x squared. And then if your line crosses the y-intercept somewhere and has a y-intercept value, you're going to add plus b. For a side opening relationship, the equation would look something like this. Instead of y, we're going to put y squared because we had to square the y values to make something look linear. So it had a constant slope. So the equation will look something like y squared equals m times x plus b. And if we look at our hyperbolic relationships, it'll either look like y equals m times the inverse of x plus b, if that's how you linearized your original graph, or the equation will be y equals m times the inverse of x squared plus b, if you had to take one over the x squared values to make a linearized or re-expressed graph. Well, let me show you one example just so you guys can see like, what this looks like and what an equation will look like with actual data that we've collected before already in this class. So I want to bring you guys back to the spinner lab where we had something which moved down an incline and was increasing in speed. The velocity was increasing. And we measured at specific times what the position of the spinner or the object was. So at two seconds of the position of 3.9 centimeters, et cetera. And when we graphed position versus time, we essentially got a top opening parabola. The spinner was increasing in speed and the position versus time graph showed that we could see that because the slope was getting steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper as time goes on. Well, in our lab, we use our position versus time graph just to get the velocities at specific times, and we ended up graphing velocity versus time, and our slope ended up being the acceleration of the spinner. Well, what if we wanted to go back and actually write an equation to find out how the position was related to time, like regardless of what's happening with the velocity? Well, here we have a top opening parabola. So what would we do to re-express or linearize this original graph? 
Well, let's go back to our Patterns of Nature poster or the worksheet that you have. If you have a top opening parabola, you know, we didn't graph generic y and x. We had a position versus time graph. That was our top, top opening parabolic graph. So if we have a position versus time graph, to linearize this kind of a graph, you'd have to take whatever's on your x-axis and square it. So that would be time squared. So we would need to make a position versus time squared graph. If we did that and got something that looked linear, we could add a linear fit and find the slope and y-intercept value of our linear fit. And then our equation would, would take this general form, but instead of y, we'd have x for position because that was on our y-axis. Instead of x squared, we'd have t squared because that was on our, our horizontal axis. And so our equation would look like position is equal to slope multiplied by t squared plus some y-intercept. And then again, we'd have to get these two values, the slope and the y-intercept, from our linear fit on our re-expressed graph. So let's go back to our data. To make a position versus time graph, we had to have a column of position values and a column of time values, and we graphed position on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. So if we want to make a position versus time squared graph, we're going to have to have, well, we already have a column of position values, we need another column now of time squared values. What does that mean? That means we have to take each of our time values and square it. So 2 squared would be 4, 3 squared would be 9. And we'd have to basically make a new third column of time squared values. And what would the units of time squared be? Well, if you're squaring time, 2 seconds squared would be 4 seconds squared. The units would be squared. If we're squaring this, the variable, we also have to square the units. So if you're graphing this in Logger Pro, in order to add a new column so you could do these calculations, you'd go up to the Data tab on the top of your screen and just select New Manual Column. And when you do that, you can name it. You could give it the name Time Squared. The symbol that you'd put in there would be T Squared, or T to the second power. And in the Units box, you just put in S Squared. So once you do that, you're going to have a Position column right here, a Time Squared column, so you can make a Position versus time squared graph. So let me show you what that looks like in Logger Pro. The original graph you would have was position versus time. In order to see the position versus time squared graph, you just left click on the variable called time and you just select the column of data that you just added, which is time squared. So you just select time squared and then you get this graph. So this does look fairly linear. So that means our original graph was truly a top opening parabolic relationship. So we'd add a linear fit, and it looks like our slope is about 0.4691 centimeters over a second squared. It has a y-intercept of 3.223 centimeters. So if we now have a graph that's linear, now we can write the equation for how position and time squared are related. Remember, any linear graph will follow the form of y equals m times x plus b. So let's now replace every one of these letters with information from our specific linearized graph. On the y-axis is the symbol x to represent position. Uh, the slope that comes from our linear fit, that's 0.4691 centimeters over second squared. So this is our m value. On the x-axis, we graphed time squared. And remember, we're replacing x or y with the symbols, not the units. So instead of x, we would, we would write t squared. And then our y-intercept uh, is very close to zero. If we looked at the, the value, it's less than 5% of our biggest y value, in this case, our biggest position. So we can just call that zero. Now we have an equation which tells us how position and time are related. So if, it, if this was in the lab context, what would I want your lab group to write on a whiteboard so that we could circle up and talk about our results and reach some consensus conclusions together as a class? Well, this is what it would look like. You'd basically need to have three things. If you end up graphing your original graph and it's nonlinear, uh, I'd like to see what is the shape of your nonlinear graph. Make sure you label each axis, what's being graphed on each axis, and the units of measure for that, that variable or that measurement. Uh, tell us what you think that trend is. Is it top opening parabolic? side opening parabolic? Is it hyperbolic? So you'd show us your original graph. You then show us what you did to linearize your or re-express your original graph. So in this example, 
we squared all the time values. So our linear graph, we put time squared in units of second squared on the x-axis, and we put position in units of centimeters on the y-axis. And then you would write the equation for your linearized graph. And just like we talked through before, it's, in this case, position is equal to the slope multiplied by time squared, in this case, plus zero. If you're watching this to help you figure out how to re-express a graph for a different type of experiment, remember, you may have to linearize your nonlinear graph a different way. You might have to square whatever's on the y-axis rather than square whatever's on the x-axis. Or you might have to take the inverse of whatever's on the x-axis or the inverse squared. Remember, go back to the Patterns of Nature handout or the poster on the classroom wall to figure out how to re-express it. And then if you get a linear relationship, you're going to write the equation in that general form as shown on that poster.